All right, welcome to Booze and Views. Check me out. Got my new Defender ammo shirt today. Uh, it's more catalog size than man size. <laughs> so tonight I'm drinking out of a, a 40 mic mic or 30 mic mic uh, shell. Ha, a guy painted SOB on it for me. I don't even know what's sanitary, but <sighs> when I was in Afghanistan, when you had a cup and you needed a drink and you didn't know if it was clean or not, we used to call this the sterile blow. <sighs> now clean. All right, so tonight, check me out. Drinking this cream of Kentucky, 11 and a half year. Uh, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Check this out. Cream of Kentucky. <laughs> Say that out loud a couple of times. Maybe you'll get why I'm laughing at it. Sounds weird. Maybe I should have picked something else. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready for cream of Kentucky, but whatever. <clears throat> it's too late. It's too late. Don't laugh. <laughs> A cream of Kentucky. That's just funny to me. All right, so let's fill it up. Let's taste this. Oh, all the way to the rim. Woo! Perfect pour. Look at that. Mmm. Slight metallic taste, I think, from the brass here. Um, maybe a little bit gunpowder residue. Maybe that's why it tastes so good. I don't know. Um, this is actually pretty good. Caramel nodes, little heat in the back of the mouth, uh, no heat in the front. Has that good caramel aftertaste. I think I could rock this even with the funny name. Uh, I think I might take my pocket knife and put cream on Kentucky, but whatever. All right. So, what's going on in the world? You know, uh, first thing I want to talk about is protesters are still protesting. Joe Biden won, but they don't care, right? Like, I think the the left supported all these protesters to get Trump out of office, and then all these protesters turned anti-government in general, right? On Inauguration Day, there was major protests in Seattle, Washington, Boston, and Portland, right? And the protesters, you know, were saying stuff like, we're ungovernable. You know, the whole using people as a, I don't know, for lack of a better term, militant arm of a, uh, you know, political party, it's a dangerous game. Because what happens when you don't appease them? You know what I mean? Like, this is a weird thing to me. Like, I thought, you know, Biden would win and all the protesters would pack up and go home. But what happened is, is they're just professional protesters. They're not going to miss out on a good protest, you know? That's like someone who gambles missing out on a poker game. Like, it's their jam. It's their what they do, right? And I just think this is weird. And I think this puts us in a weird place because um, these, you know, and, and I'll tell you this is, you didn't see any of these protests on the mainstream media, right? Didn't even show it. Why? Because it doesn't fit the narrative, right? It doesn't fit the propaganda. So it's kind of strange to me that, you know, all these Antifa guys or whoever the rioters are, call them whoever you want, argue about whatever you want to call them. I don't give a shit because you do that anyway. But uh, it's kind of interesting to me that, you created these guys and then you can't control them because they turned anti-government on you because you couldn't appease them anymore, right? It's kind of just bizarre to me. And, and you know, like no other place. I mean, you know, Camilla Harris, AOC, they were bailing these guys out of jail all summer long. And then now guess what? They don't care about them anymore, right? So of course they're still going to be angry and of course they're not going to care about the government. And I think this is, uh, you know... This is, uh, you know, what Joe was saying in his uh, inauguration speech where, you know, everything in politics doesn't have to be on fire. But the truth is, is you lit that fire with these protesters, right? Maybe other places you didn't light the fire. I don't know, right? But I'm going to tell you this is you lit the fire with all these protesters and Antifa and all them. And then now they feel like they don't care about whoever's in government, 
So what do you do now, right? What do, what do you do now? Kind of crazy, right? I've just been kind of reading about this stuff and it's kind of crazy to me. I'm just gonna take a drink, man. The world's such a crazy place. All right, next thing I wanna talk about is Robin Hood, right? Uh, I've been using Robin Hood since, I don't know, last October, something like that, I seen it. And uh, it took me a long time before I even spent any money on the Robin Hood app. And then for you those who don't know what Robin Hood is, is it's, it's a E-Trade like app where you can watch stocks and you can figure out where to invest your money, right? And it only lets you do so much money. So it's, it's only chump change, right? And, um, you know, me personally, I think the travel industry is going to come back because I think COVID is going to slowly slip away from us because no one in the Democrats care about COVID because it was just to get Trump out of office, I believe. Um, and uh, I think COVID's gonna go away. So I think movies are coming back and I can't wait. And I love movies, man. Remember when I used to go to the movies and give movie reviews instead of this? I love that, right? I can't wait till that happens. So, uh, I don't know. A week ago or so, I bought AMC, right? And I bought it at a super low price and then like a day later comes out, they secured, they somehow leveraged money, so their stocks went through the roof, GameStop goes through the roof, and this is all just regular people, you know, using a couple hundred bucks, whatever they got, you know, to uh, buy stocks, hopefully make a couple bucks. And uh, Wall Street, right, and, and big tech and all them, they shut it down. You know what I mean? Like, they just shut it down. They don't want me, you making money off of Wall Street, right? And what I don't understand is that Wall Street's a publicly traded stuff. Everything is publicly traded, right? This is why I don't buy into the, you're a private company. If you're on Wall Street, you are not a private company. You're a public company. But w what happened? Like, all the... All the all the peasants made a few bucks off of off of GameStop stock went up like three hundred percent. It shot up. They all sold. They made a couple hundred bucks. Like why you guys live it on Wall Street, right? And uh, you know, Trump said several times he thinks it, the Wall Street is rigged, and you know, I don't know if I necessarily believe that, but I definitely don't think they want the peasants having money out of the deal and making money on these trades, right? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy to me, right? So the uh, AMC and GameStop shot through the roof for stock, and, and, you know, it just goes to show, like, I think now more than ever, there's a bigger divide between the rich and the peasants, and that divide is growing bigger every day with big tech and and you know all the small businesses are out of uh out of business right like uh, it that's just growing bigger every day it's kind of weird i don't know uh but i did make some money on uh, amc and i cashed it out i bought something else that's going to make me money right and uh i just kind of use it as for fun but once i figure this trading thing out i'm going to do it more but Kind of interesting, right? Okay, next thing I couldn't resist, and I want you guys to hear this, right? So, man arrested, huge stockpile of guns and weapons, cops say. That's the headline, right? And then and then, 44-year-old uh, man, I'm not going to say his name, was arrested Friday uh, by the sheriff's office after they were tipped off of a huge, huge, huge stockpile of uh, firepower at his house and business. Um, the deputies say what they found was incredible. He had more than 50 guns and they were unregistered. <laughs> like, they don't even register guns in my state, but whatever, right? This is, this is how bad some of these articles are because no one understands the law. And sometimes this includes the, the, the police departments don't really understand the law and a lot of this stuff, right? So um, <clears throat> he had more than 50 guns, over 15,000 rounds of ammo and several pounds of gunpowder, right? Like, 
Okay, the guy could have reloaded ammo, right? That would explain it. Uh, the guy could just be a fan of guns. He could go to the range. I'll tell you this is in most shooting classes you go to, you're shooting 500 to 1,000 rounds a day. So 15,000 rounds would definitely would only last you. Like if you were doing serious range training at 1,000 in a weekend, right? That's 15 weekends. That wouldn't even last you the whole year. But I like how they think this is a lot of ammo, right? And then... Uh, also, they say they found five pop pipe bombs, uh, which were later rendered safe by the bomb squad. Okay, if you open a guy's gun safe and they're just sitting there, like, I doubt he rigged them to blow if he didn't know you guys were coming. But, you know, it's besides the point. Um, and then he was taken on multiple felony charges, including destructive devices, explosive possession of assault weapons, and more. Uh, okay. Okay. Assault weapons are legal in most places, right? And explosive devices define it. What if it was black powder in the pipe? Is that illegal to have in your gun safe, right? And the truth is, is um, all these charges are just to limit what you do and they're to ruin you and your livelihood and your career, whatever that might be, right? Uh, the truth is, is like, without knowing, like, did he actually have explosives? I don't know, either way, but I'm gonna tell you this, if this guy's building pipe bombs, he probably doesn't have high explosives because he wouldn't need the pipe <laughs> if he had explosives. And I'm just speaking as an old school Special Forces demo guy, like, I kinda know better here, right? So uh, if he's making pipe bombs, it's there's stuff in there that's probably actually not illegal. Just throwing it out there, hey, you know what I mean? And then, look, I get it. If you put bite bombs somewhere and you were trying to blow something up and they caught you in the act, hey, I get it. You're trying to blow stuff up. I get that, right? But if the guy had gunpowder in pipes, is that necessarily a pipe bomb? We don't know, right? But uh, the funny thing in with the, all of this is how the articles are written, how bad it is for all this stuff when we really don't know the truth. You know what I mean? <laughs> and But I would tell you this is, if you actually think they're not gonna come to your house because you own a gun one day, like, you're crazy, man. They're gonna single you out individually, right? And and that's how it's gonna be done, and that's how the game's gonna be played. Just throwing it out there, man. All right, so I'm just sitting in my kitchen having a drink. It's Thirsty Thursday, man. Cheers to you guys on Thirsty Thursday. There's a lot of crazy stuff going in the world. I don't even know where to start today. So, uh, all right. I'm John Trek McPhee, the Sheriff of Baghdad. This is Booze and Views. Uh, remember, this is my opinion. I'm probably wrong. And uh, it's not the news you need. It's the news you deserve. Cheers, guys. Cheers. My slightly metallic whiskey.